basement tapes. For something completely different, we're gonna stay in the basement this week. Out of the cold! <laughs> We've arrived in the basement. Our top stories are... Raising money for Kofi. Student athletes on the road. The mounting financial crisis in Europe. The annual Stew Review Variety Show took place this past week. The proceeds went to a former St. Thomas student in need. Alex Solek was at the event and has this report. Inda was one of the performers who came out to play at the Stu Review concert last Wednesday night. The concert exists to help out Kofi, a former St. Thomas University graduate who was brutally attacked in 2007. Kofi was outside a nightclub when he was stabbed multiple times, leaving him with permanent spinal cord injuries. Kofi still awaits justice for the crimes committed against him. One person involved is currently facing charges for the stabbing, but when he faced trial in January, a misplaced file folder resulted in a mistrial. The concert was created as a fundraiser to help Kofi pay his medical expenses. Performers from all backgrounds came out to show their talent. MC and Stu Professor Andrew Titus explains why he got involved. First of all, it is an excellent opportunity. Uh, no, that's not it at all. That's bullshit, okay? Here's the real reason, right? I do it because I love it. I love to get out here and see these things. I like to try and help people to generate and feel the excitement that's necessary for a moment like this. Kofi was unable to be there at the show, but he did send the people at Stu this message. And lastly to the students, uh, you're the very reason why uh, this whole thing is a success in the first place. Uh, some of you I know and some of you I don't, but that's the beauty of St. Thomas. Uh, it's a community spirit um, and it brings everybody together. One thing is for sure, Stu's got talent. All you have to do is pay attention, find your I think it was fantastic. I, I mean, the amount of talent out of this university just blows my mind. big sense of community and big sense of family and I think it's really good that they're still helping him even though like he's alumni and he doesn't go here anymore like that says something about Stu. All the money raised from that's going to go to uh, directly to Kofi as will the proceeds from the show tonight. I think about him every now and, then. and to be able to help someone in need, someone our own age who's going through a lot of stuff, I mean that's that's amazing, and if doing music and playing music is helping out that person, then I'm going to give it all I can. For Stu Journalism, I'm Alex Solak. elections are underway at St. Thomas University, there are still positions left with no candidates. Alicia Vaughn has more. Election campaigns for next year's student union here at St. Thomas University have been underway for over a week, but it's been a quiet race for positions on the Equinian Board of Directors. There are four positions available, but the only one being contested is member at large. As of now, there are no candidates for second, third, or fourth year representative. Adam Wright is the sole candidate for member at large. The third year journalism student tries his best to promote the campaign, posting witty facts and pictures on Facebook, jokingly referring to himself as the opponent. The Equinian Board of Directors plays an important role in the Stu journalism community, although not many people are aware of what they do. They are responsible for overlooking operations surrounding the campus paper, as well as setting up interviews and hiring the editor-in-chief for the following year. As for Adam, he hopes the mock campaign will bring light to the elections in an effort to get more people interested in the board. 
Any positions that are not filled this election will be reopened until the fall. Today is the last day to vote for all positions. For Stu Journalism, I'm Alicia Avon. Five months after a tragic hit and run accident, police have laid charges. Scott McMillan has more. 20 year old Diane Victoria West of Chipman, New Brunswick, was denied bail on February 17th. West was charged with obstruction of justice by destroying evidence, threatening people with violence to impede justice, and failing to offer assistance. These charges stem from an August 29th accident that killed Diane Trache. Trache was killed in the intersection behind me late at night while crossing it in her motorized wheelchair. West has opted for trial by judge and will be held in custody until preliminary hearings begin on April 6th. For Stu Journalism, I'm Scott McMillan. There is usually public outrage when an animal abuse case is discovered. But in New Brunswick, pet laws don't provide as much protection as you might think. Allison Duguid has more. I'm here at the City View Dog Park in Fredericton, where the animals enjoy the freedom of running around and playing with their owners. Sadly, not all pets in New Brunswick enjoy the feeling of being part of the family. New Brunswick pet ownership laws state that domestic animals are actually the property of its owners and can be discarded just like an old piece of furniture. Our province lags behind the rest of the country as legislation hasn't been changed since the late 19th century. This means that pets can be destroyed at the owner's will and some forms of abuse are actually legal. In an upcoming episode of The Basement Tapes, I will explore the consequences of these ancient pet laws and speak to those who want them changed. Back to you. The proposed sale of MB Power to Hydro-Quebec continues to take top priority in New Brunswick politics. A recent development has drawn one of New Brunswick's oldest companies into the controversy. Crystal Klein has more. Chicken bones and the heart-shaped box were invented by the Ganang brothers of St. Stephen, but this year has been more bitter than sweet for the chairman of the company, David Ganang. He was asked by the Premier to be head of a panel looking into the New Brunswick power deal with Hydro-Quebec. As soon as the panel came out in favor of the deal, there was a flood of comments on the Ganang Facebook page. Ganang himself said that even though his company would receive a break on power rates if the deal went through, he was looking out for the best interest of the province. Among the comments on the Facebook page was a call to boycott Ganang chocolates. If this affected Valentine's Day sales, the company is insane. Interestingly enough, another big New Brunswick company on the panel was McCain Foods. However, there has not been a cause to boycott some of our favorite snacks, such as french fries. Then again, McCain doesn't have a Facebook page. I'm Crystal Klein, Stu Journalism, Fredericton. Stay with us. Coming after the break. Jason Cassidy takes us on the road to find out what it's like to be a student athlete. 